So let, let's get started. Um, my name is uh, Sean. I go by Ash. I'm um, with and I'm also looking at the PDF here. And um, PDF rendering. Uh, hopefully, you'll find it interesting. Um, the, the interesting thing about PDF is that it's, it's really a print format as opposed to document format. And that in itself is in it gives us interesting challenges. People are used to um, PDF being reliable, reproducible, um, and at the same time they expect to edit the PDF documents. Um, there is a conflict of interest there between these two worlds. So we'll see how that plays and goes in. We're going to go over um, some of the rendering challenges and pictures of all the instances. So it's not going to be task only. Then we're going to talk a little bit about them. Um, the challenges and how we met them after the entry. And we'll see some um, results as we go. So here is an interesting uh, complex PDF and this is how it looks um, today. This, this is how we report it and you can see it's a mess. You can't read it. It doesn't, it doesn't really look Right. Um, and this is another one. Again, it's com complex. It has um, it has kanji uh, script. It has complex images, and you can see it's multi uh, multi layered with obviously a lot of complex position and happening and alignments and, and, and whatnot for all these different objects. Um, I, I should say, in fairness, that this is. These are not represented. And most cases were fine. This is why we don't have you know, people complaining all day about PDF being completely broken. But these are some of the more complex cases that, that are um, broken in ways that are not acceptable at all. They're essentially non functional, okay, unusable. So for, for, for those users who heavily depend on complex um, scripts, Asian scripts, complex documents that, that have charts and, and text being intermingled, for them this is really important. For customers um, who need this kind of functionality in their office suite, they can migrate to the office if they don't have it. So we need, we need to have this. And in the online world, we will see this becomes uh, even more interesting. This is unreadable. Um, it is unreadable because the script that is used here um, is, is not actually rendered from fonts. Uh, the glyphs themselves happen to be embedded in the PDF. So the PDF, um, uh, when it was generated, it was generated in a, 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 I almost want to say, foolproof or safe way by embedding the glyphs so that they could be um, portable. But unfortunately, uh, many, many viewers are failed and Potter, the viewer of choice that we have in the office, gives us this. And this, of course, is unacceptable. So, the challenges that we have is that PDF is not really a, a, an editable document format. And we want to both render it accurately and at the same time be able to edit it. This in itself is, is quite challenging. Because the format uh, of PDF is really designed to make sure that everything that you put on the page comes out exactly where you wanted it to be. Meaning, it doesn't really understand what the text is in the same way that writer understands text. It only understands that there should be a certain character Render with certain properties at a certain x, y coordinates on the page. So the character next to it doesn't need to belong to the first character, even though visually we understand that these two characters are part of the same word, or maybe they aren't, because the space is also not encoded necessarily. Um, and I will show you an example of that. Uh, when you try to edit, text that is really just um, graphic symbols 
in the PDF world, um, that becomes very, very challenging because you have lost pretty much all context. So one of the challenges is when we extract text from the PDF, it comes out as individual characters in many cases, and we need to do some uh, extra processing to figure out that this is one word, and that there's a space in another word, and so on, until a new line um, ends the paragraph. So, here at the top you can see, this is how it's supposed to be rendered. This is the um, text as PDF intended it to be shown. And this is how you would actually get it displayed if you simply took every element in the PDF and try to render it in its supposed position. These are individual elements, they have nothing to do with one another, in fact you cannot uh, edit them as a sentence or even as words. Okay? These are just floating characters. Uh, this is a major, major problem and PDF does help us quite a bit there. Um, although, again, we'll talk about some of the things that are missing um, since this is work in progress, so we aren't completely um, done yet. So, why um, we're not really um, able to use popular um, to solve these problems. Um, some, of, some of the main problems have to do with um, core support. Popular is missing for many of the complex things that we really need. Like, as I, as I showed, the case of the um, Asian script um, that is encoded in, in, in glyphs is completely missing. Another is the licensing problems. Um, as uh, some of you will know, Poplar is included in LibreOffice via an out-of-process wrapper um, because we cannot integrate it, um, and that has huge overhead, uh, at least in performance, if not possibly in uh, the maintenance overhead for those who need to debug and um, uh, troubleshoot some of the PDF problems and improve it. Um, and the accuracy of the end result is also um, very high, meaning it does have a lot of corner cases, it's, it's, it's really not well maintained. So it, it, it's something of a dead end uh, considering all these problems together. So what are we looking for? This is what we're looking for. We're looking for um, something that first of all gives us uh, view only uh, results. Because in many cases the user really doesn't want to edit. I have mentioned that people typically expect to be able to edit any document they, they, uh, they own um, unless it's protected, and PDF is one of those. But in practice, often that's not the case. Often we want to view the document um, and probably not do much else besides. In those cases, what you would want is you would want very fast and very accurate rendering. You don't want to know trying to get it, uh, you know, the PDF and import it into um, the LibreOffice um, world. So, you, you want something that will really um, save all the overhead of creating all the um, thousands and thousands of individual elements that the PDF represents. You want something that renders fast and accurate and shows on the screen with low memory and CPU um, consumption and footprint. And you also want to um, uh, avoid all the inaccuracies that come with the editing workflow. Uh, meaning, since you're only showing on the screen, you can't actually uh, print it into an image. Render the PDF into an image directly and just show that on the screen. And not, not worry about creating editable text boxes and editable shapes and, and, and layered things. And um, so, this is actually something that people can um, play with um, by enabling an environment variable just to get to, to those immediate goals because that, that, that much is already available and again we'll, we'll get back to, to that in a bit. Um, PDF, on the other hand, is, is giving us solid uh, alternatives. Here, first of all, it is 
significantly faster. If nothing, it doesn't have to go through um, a wrapper. Um, it is uh, rendering directly to an image, and that is happening with higher accuracy and speed. Um, it gives us something that is uh, not necessarily difficult to recreate, but it's very good that it is uh, used already by others and it seems to be working fine. And that is the ability to give us uh, a text string, a, a, uh, a UTF string, out of whatever shape um, the PDF actually stores uh, or stored the text in. So it has heuristics to try and figure out where the word breaks would go, depending on the positioning of the characters. It would be able to figure out the kernel, which is the delta of the uh, y-axis delta of the characters, and it would be able to deduce from that that this is actually a new uh, first character in a new word, and not just the last character of the word that I'm in. And with the same logic, you can do the same kind of trick um, on the uh, uh, on the other axis. Um, so I mentioned I said y-axis, I mean x-axis, and, and y-axis would be for new lines. Um, so, uh, the is already used quite uh, heavily in Chromium. It is the uh, Chromium um, viewer, so it, is, it has a very, very wide distribution and user base. It is very well maintained and it has a compatible license that we can integrate with our code. And that gives us a very solid platform to resolve all our goals and in the future even add editing ability, which we've also made some progress towards, uh, as I uh, briefly mentioned. So, in a little bit more detail, what we did is um, for phase one, we've achieved the immediate goals, and these are to be able to render very quickly, very accurately the PDF pages um, and show them in online by default. Um, as images to the user without editing ability. And this satisfies quite a large number of use cases where a PDF is a PDF and people just want to be able to browse and view it and share it. They're not interested in editing it just yet. Okay? But if we can do that with very high accuracy, meaning we don't get um, random symbols, um, and we get very beautiful um, um, layering and, and uh, rasterization of the PDF and then that satisfies our users and customers. Um, it, it also is significantly faster when it does this rendering because it isn't recreating all the, the hierarchy of objects and layers and, and editing with shapes in memory. So it, it does end up actually being faster if not necessarily um, uh, with a smaller footprint in memory, and uh, I, I will show some numbers uh, quickly, even though th there was no goal as such to reduce the memory foot footprint, um, you will see that there is an interesting story account that I will share um, towards the end of the talk, and tomorrow, uh, let me know this, this whole I will be talking more about optimization where we targeted um, both loading and memory saving um, directly. And, and this is part of that story as well. Now, um, as I said, the FE doesn't come with many of the shortcomings of popular, but we also want to go to phase two. Phase two is editing PDF. And for that, we have uh, chosen a smooth transition for the user. So the user will load the document, the PDF, into the graphics and will see um, a, an image rendering of the pages. When they choose to edit the page, they right-click on the image and uh, using the break command, they are able to essentially break the image into its editable components. And that, that essentially gives the user the ability to go between the image and um, the editable components. 
in the future when we have a much more stable um, editing functionality, we might choose to make the editing the default, or we might actually make it an option, a configurable option that the user can choose, at least on the desktop, and potentially in, uh, in online. Uh, for the implementation, um, we've gone through multiple stages internally to um, transition from popular to uh, PDF for the image rendering. And the way we did that is, first of all, we already had the ability to um, import a PDF and that only rendered the first page. We've extended that to make it more flexible and reusable uh, in terms of API. Um, we've also done a significant amount of work to try and extend the PDF API. So the story there is that PDF um, doesn't seem to have core uh, mandate or requirements to uh, support editing as such. As long as it is rendering correctly, um, it seems that people are happy as users. Um, however, what we need is we need API to extract all the PDF details and information so that we can use that for editing. Um, and in many cases, it, it didn't export those uh, publicly. So internally, it knows all the details. Um, for example, on the scaling of the text and the um, objects, um, there is uh, a matrix transformations that happen in every object, potentially. Um, and we needed those details. We needed the transformation matrices, um, and we needed the scaling and the other properties of each of the individual objects. And to, to achieve that, we've added um, 32 uh, uh, new API at least um, to my last count. And most of these are already upstream into the PDF project. So this is this is a, a good story again because now we are we don't have a very large patch and what we are doing is we are essentially um, simply including the upstream latest PDF and most of these API are no longer custom that only we use. Um, we've also created a new reporting um, piece of logic that's the SDPDF filter and to help the user um, break into edit mode we had to store the original PDF and that is stored um, as a link with every image in the page in a shared way so there is one copy of the PDF within the, o within the ODF format um, that is used when you need to break or edit the PDF either within the office or externally. If you want to edit with an external tool that is also accessible. This is the missing bit. So there is more work to be done. As I said, this is a work in progress mostly. It's a, um, it's a large piece of effort. And we are still uh, missing many of the uh, uh, necessary dependencies for getting the editing fully functional. Um, some of this include um, uh, features such as more complex um, edges and line drawing and shape rendering um, details, um, but we are also missing some uh, uh, more involved test cases. Uh, now that we've, we have both popular and PDF, we, we don't have a, a, a decent coverage. So we, we really need to uh, our uh, testing work here. Uh, another concern is that Potter has been around for many years now and it, had, it has been tested on a large uh, number of documents, uh, PDF documents. Um, PDF human the new code that we have is not well tested on more than a few hundred of the best documents within the new office. So we need a better um, uh, baking time so that we would be sure that we, we would have raised a lot of um, documents when we transition from popular to a PDF. So, with that, I want to share with you some results. So, hopefully, you will find these uh, interesting. Um, in the corner, uh, we have the uh, old rendering that is happening with the popular, and the large one in the background is PDF rendering with the image directly. Uh, within LibreOffice. So these screenshots are coming from LibreOffice directly, uh, and, and they are very um, recent. Um, the 
These are, of course, enabled with the environment variable that I mentioned. We won't get them by default, again, because we don't want to break um, functionality for everyone. So you can see, again, there are a very um, subtle but critical differences. Poplar is unable, for example, in this case, to correctly render the background um, of that box, and that results in just unreadable text. Um, so it's, it's, it's really not very helpful, even though it is something that you think it is um, probably supported. Um, this is another one, again, very, very subtle. Do you notice the difference? Yes? Anyone noticing the difference with what's going on here? There's, there's an image of a house. Um, it's supposed to be behind the text, not in front of it. Again, very subtle, but just makes it up as um, not usable at all for um, the end user. Um, this is another one, it's a, it's a complex uh, math maker. Um, it happens to be rendering uh, fairly similar to what you would expect, but again, you can see that it is, it is broken in uh, many of the complex uh, parts of the, uh, um, the, the math. Um, another case, again, not uh, a very bad case, but you can see that the, the text is very uh, much disorganized um, and that, that involves a lot of problems. So here is another one. Quickly you can see um, the graph is, is, is it should have um, uh, bounds where PDF essentially uh, describes the limits of the um, the, the device on which the graph is rendered and outside of that even though there, there are um, uh, coordinates for the lines and everything, you're not supposed to render those, but the popular seems to be uh, unaware of those limits, and so it ends up drawing that to right. Um, this you see, you will remember from, from the first slide, and you can see that once you've rendered it properly, it, 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 it's completely different, right? It's unrecognizable um, that this, these two are the same. Pretty, pretty uh, impressive uh, matchup. Now, for the memory, the, the story here is, is different, and uh, maybe um, I should mention in a couple of minutes what, what is happening. So, first of all, these are uh, sample documents, and the difference between them is the first three have complex uh, scripts, Asian scripts. Um, the fourth one has a lot of images in it. CSS is a very complex um, demo of sorts of the different things that you can do in CSS, which is used on the web. Um, so there is a lot of complex um, formatting and tiling of text and other elements. And the last one is um, the math uh, document that you've seen. So it has a lot of text, but also a lot of math symbols. So, you can see that in the, the, the red is with PDF image rendering. You can see that in a couple of cases, the memory consumption is significantly higher. But in other cases, you see that the memory actually went down. So what, what is going on? Um, the answer is that when you render an image, you essentially have a fixed number of pixels that you are rendering it, right? you're, you're, you're essentially saying, regardless of how many um, different things the document has, I am going to render everything into um, X and Y resolution image. Okay, and then you store that in memory as a PNG. Now, what that means is that if the document has something extremely complex and you render it in the fixed resolution that you chosen, it is going to end up taking up a fixed amount of memory. You cannot consume more than the size of the image in memory. Right? That is your worst case scenario. So you essentially capped your maximum memory consumption by rendering it to images. However, the other side of the coin is that if you have very sparse element, elements in the text that describing them in, in LibreOffice native objects, they would take much less memory. 
So, with that in mind, you can see what is happening um, with the text <coughs> script when you're rendering the, what is really text. The text was more compact in the before case. Once you render them, you're actually consuming more memory than, than you should. But in other cases where you already have very complex uh, structure, that is really consuming a lot of memory when you try to recreate it within the real office. Um, so by rendering it to an image, you are essentially limiting the maximum footprint. Okay? And at least if this is representative of, of you know, typical um, collection of different types of documents, um, you will see that the average is around 100%. In this case, it was 97% of the original memory that we are consuming with the FM image rendering. Uh, meaning that here there is no major written loss unless you happen to have only a um, uh, uh, single type of document or the majority of the documents or of a single type. In that case you either uh, win significantly or lose significantly on the memory front. So again, here we didn't have uh, any requirements to improve the memory footprint, but we also uh, didn't want to uh, make the situation uh, much worse. So with that, um, we have a couple of minutes and I'm happy to take questions.